Hey y'all, welcome to Parker's Reef. On today's episode, we're gonna make the best even better by adding some automations and some motorized ball valves. All right, thank you for joining me on yet another episode of Parker's Reef. And as touched on in the intro, today we are gonna make the best even better by adding some automation and some motorized ball valves. Now, you may be wondering what on earth am I talking about? And hopefully you've had the opportunity to follow the progress of the Dream Fish Shop over the last few weeks, the brand new Deer Park Aquarium, which has been designed from the ground up by Dave, the owner there. And one of the systems that he put in, which is an absolute joy to see and work on, is this beautiful matte filtration filter skid that was supplied by Fresh by Design here in Australia. This is an absolute beast of a filter system that comes completely assembled, literally hook up your connections, plug it into the power, and you are off and running, filtering five kilograms of fish food a day. It doesn't go by number of liters, it goes by kilograms of fish food. It's simply a beast of a system, and it is really probably one of the best things on the market. So you may be wondering, how what am I talking about, about making the best even better? Well, let's focus our attention on that filter skid for a second and have a look at some of the components. I'll be sure to put the footage on screen for you now. It has mechanical filtration in place, both in the way of some large filter socks and also another provisioning where you can put some coarse uh, filter pad where the water comes into that sump. It has a huge K1 media reactor right in the heart of the media or of the filter I should say, which does a fantastic job, particularly on the high fish load systems. That K1 media breeds a bacteria that really keeps all of those nutrients under control. It does have provision for a uh, media reactor as well, and the team were running carbon on it, although temporarily that has been taken offline. But we can focus our attention on the beast of the skimmer that is right there. It's the main part of this filter skid and how it works and what some things we can do to make it even better. Now, if we have a look at these taps here, you'll notice the system is already beautifully set up with some fantastic additions like this neck washer jet here. You can simply turn this tap and it washes out the neck of the skimmer cup using the water from the sump. Beautiful piece of work. As soon as you turn that tap, a uh, pop-up sprinkler jet comes and gives some high pressure water to get all of that gunk off the skimmer neck. And likewise, there are three washer jets around the, uh, I was gonna say the outside, but the inside of the skimmer cup there that likewise you can turn a tap and that will spray high pressured water from the sump around the cup of that skimmer to give it a wash down. All of that water then drains down into a drain for easy removal. Now, you may be thinking that is as good as it gets and I've been thinking that for a fair while, but the moment I saw those taps on that filter skid, it got, it just set a light bulb off in my head, it started to think about how we could make that even better because if you follow me and if you follow this channel, you may or may not know, I do love automations, I do love these little projects and I do also know as a realist that tasks that are a little bit complex or uh, just annoying to do, do not get done, especially in our reef tanks and even more so, probably tenfold in a local fish shop. So. As much as I enjoy turning those taps, I do realize the novelty will wear off and over time that skimmer cups is gonna get gunkier and gunkier and then it'll become a once a month job that is absolutely horrendous rather than uh, every few days job that is not so bad at all. So I got to thinking about what I could do to improve that situation and that's where these two little devices come into play. All right, so for those who don't know, these are a motorized ball valve which as the name would imply, it is exactly the same as a ball valve that you've probably got on the overflow of your aquarium or maybe even controlling the return pump. It is literally just a valve that has a motor that opens and closes it instead of a tap. So you can kind of see where I'm going for the solution here. We can get rid of those two taps on that skimmer that control the wash downs and put motorized ball valves in their place. However, that wouldn't exactly solve our problem because all that would do would stop us having to turn the taps to turn them on and instead apply power to these to turn them on and off instead. And that's where the second part of this automation comes into play. I've got two of them in here. It is a delay relay. Now these ones are programmable and basically what that means, you apply power to them, they wait a set amount of time and then they let power through. Now that works really, really well in some other use cases that we have at the Dream Fish Store. One such example is for an RODI system there, 
where Dave has a uh, solenoid much like the motorized ball valve that opens up and lets water into the system when the RODI reservoir is low, but he wanted a delay before the boost pump came on because if the pre-filters were not completely full of water before that, booster pump turned on, it would actually suck the O-rings in from those pre-filters and then cause a leak down the track. So I used one of these programmable delay relays to make that booster pump just wait 60 seconds before turning on. And that way it had ensured that all of the water had got through those pre-filters before the booster pump turned on and really hit that system in the second gear. Now, we're looking at a similar sort of situation here in our skimmer setup. We're not just looking for a delay, we actually wanna set a bit of a cycle. We want those valves to turn on for a set amount of time, then we want them to turn off for a set amount of time, and then repeat again. So say we want them to turn off for four hours, turn on for 15 seconds, turn off for four hours and keep that cycle going. That's where these little relays are gonna come into play. I'll open up this box and I'll take you through how they work now. All right, here is my box of tricks with the lid taken off. You can see two of these uh, delay relay timers in there. I've got two because I want to control these taps individually. The power comes in from the side here, goes and splits off into each one of these modules, and then the outlets come out the top and bottom. Now, you can see over here, I've got a connector that allows me to hook up to those uh, motorized ball valves. And on the inside of the lid, I've printed out some instructions so I remember how to program it. The units each have four buttons that you use to program. And according to my instructions here, I've got to hold down button one to enter programming mode. So when we do that, you can see that we now get a uh, program 31 on screen. Now I've put on screen now the 32 different functions you can use. This is the one we want to get that on off on off time. Now the second step there is to press button one to enter program 31. So I'm going to do that now by pressing button one and you can now see that I've got an A value which is set at 15. Now that is the on time. So I've got 15 seconds on there. I can scroll through and change those settings if I want to. I can press the uh, buttons to go up or down. See button three brings it down, button two brings it up. And then button four on the side there actually changes the decimal place to move from uh, minutes to seconds to points of seconds. So I'm gonna move that back over to the second value so that I can have this device turn on for 15 seconds. Once I'm happy with that, I press button one to move across to our B setting, which is our off time. Now, this is currently set to 240 minutes, otherwise known as four hours. Now, again, I can move that up or down by pressing a button two or button three, and button four, again, will change that decimal place, but I'm happy with minutes. So I can press button one to accept that. Now, the device, you can see the LED has come in and it has entered its A mode timer countdown. So that 15 seconds is counting down now. Once that timer runs out, the light will go off and the device will start counting down from 240 minutes. So now you can see we're off and uh, the timer will go down. It'll just take a lot longer because it's minutes, not seconds, but all looks good. Now, I'm just gonna button this little uh, waterproof box up. It does have some nice waterproof glands around the outside. Not that I wanna dunk this under the water, but uh, it will just allow it to be near that sump. We've got that 12 to 24 volt power going in and the two outlets to our uh, valves. Let's just test to see our valve does work okay through it. You can just see that ball opening up in there. And then when I disconnect the power, you will see that ball closing back up again. So I think we're right to take this up the road and uh, test this out on that beautiful matte filtration skimmer at Deer Park Aquarium. All right, one last look at this masterpiece of a filtration system before I uh, take the hacksaw to it and uh, potentially ruin it forever. But no, we should be pretty safe. But uh, you can see the matte filtration signs there and the fresh by design. It's a decent sized unit, is movable by a, either a forklift or a pallet jack. You can see the skim has got some great froth in there already. And uh, you can see those manual wash down taps are in place, but we'll check those out in a minute. Over here is the uh, filter sock side. We have made a small adjustment there just because most of the water exiting the K1 media reactor was going into that center sock. So uh, we've directed some of the recirc water to the outside socks. K1 media is in full operation now and you can see all of that there bubbling and boiling around there doing everything you should do. I should say it doesn't actually boil, but it just uh, moves around, which looks like it's uh, boiling. And then you've got the massive skimmer that it is there, which has been working incredibly well. And you can see the uh, center washdown nozzle there that actually pops down into the neck and sprays high pressured water. And uh, it's controlled by this tap that we will be, I was gonna say replacing, but uh, we'll be putting the uh, solenoid just after that tap. So you do still have some manual control should you need to turn that uh, solenoid off. 
that goes through there and uh, into that washer jet. It's a standard sort of sprinkler washer jet. And then the uh, outside cup runs by this tap here, comes up here and then splits off, goes around the cup to the three uh, also sprinkler jets, which you can see we have actually just raised up a little bit just so that it gets a little bit more of the cup. And if I turn the tap to the outside washer jets, just to show you them in operation, you'll see they do quite a good job. Yeah, look at that of just uh, hosing that gunk off the uh, outside of the cup. And likewise, the uh, inner neck one, I love the way that pops down just to clean inside the neck. They all appear to be working fine. So I think it's probably time I got out the tools and uh, installed these motorized ball valves. And uh, this is uh, peak human form here, working away with a Dremel and a hacksaw, uh, a little bit of a time lapse. Obviously, I don't operate that fast, but you can see these uh, motorized ball valves are going in place just after the tap, so we do still have a manual override. Should anything go wrong, got my safety boots on there and uh, always wear my safety glasses, so we're in good steed there, but uh, so far so good. The operation appears to be going successfully and our patient should live, but uh, we're at the stage where I really just need to let the glue dry and then test operation. So uh, we might start off with the inner neck cleaner. Let's apply some power and see if that one still opens and uh, sends that washer jet down. It does great success and uh, without water spraying everywhere in the filtration room. It should run for 15 seconds and then the uh, washer jet will go back up into that uh, little holder and uh, stop cleaning. So we must be getting pretty close now. Hopefully my electronics have not failed me. There it goes. Beautiful. That's a success. Very happy with that one. Both that it worked and uh, also that uh, didn't uh, spray water everywhere. Let's just adjust our manual taps and we'll try the system again with the outside cup washers. It should work the same, but always good when you're working with uh, PVC just to make sure that all the glue has worked. But uh, I just like to isolate them so I can keep an eye on each one at a time and uh, they've worked a treat. <clears throat> you can see how well they wash that cup down. It just uh, is a sight to see when you have those sprinkler jets in there sending water everywhere. Again, this should run for 15 seconds and then uh, turn off for four hours. So we'll be getting pretty close to the end time there. And there they go, they're off for four hours. Very happy with that indeed. Consider that skimmer automated. All right, guys, there you have it. That was the automation of the already incredible matte filtration filter skid from Fresh by Design here in Australia. I simply added a little bit of electronics to it. In fact, two different types of components. That motorized ball valve that I got from Baccarat, I think I, that's how it's pronounced anyway. I'll put the details on screen for you now to check them out. Please bear in mind, if you are looking to add something like this to your reef tank system, you're probably gonna want a PVC motorized ball valve like I used on this system. System here. If we were looking at something else that was dealing with freshwater, you might be okay with a brass one, which are considerably cheaper. But if you are dealing with salt water, please do look into the PVC motorized ball valves like I used in this situation. You can always talk to the team at Baccarat here in Melbourne. They will guide you through it, but uh, that's my advice there anyway. And the second piece of equipment I used, and again, two of, was these delay relay timers that I picked up off eBay. They're about five bucks each. I've used them in a bunch of different scenarios throughout my home and also my reef tank. So um, I'm getting fairly familiar with them. The instructions are a little bit feeble to find online. So uh, if you do get stuck, let me know in the comments down below but uh, once you get a copy of the instructions on which each one of those programs does because my the versions I got actually have 32 different modes from uh, waiting for a certain time and then turning something on or turning something on waiting for a set amount of time before turning off different cycles um, turning on and turning off twice three times five times you name it the mode I wanted was that continuous cycle of on for so long off for so long on for so long and just repeat forever I'll put all of the details of where I got those, including the link to eBay where I picked mine up. I probably would say you can find them somewhere else, which will be exactly the same thing. When I've searched for the instructions for these things online, I've uncovered literally millions of them from uh, Timu, AliExpress, eBay, Amazon, you name it. You will find these kind of electronics anywhere and you'll probably be able to find a higher quality version of what I used. But uh, like I said, I've used these ones a few times and they work well for me. Other than that, guys, I think I will wrap things up there. It's getting fairly hot here now, so I'm gonna go jump in the shower, cool down, and uh, call it a day. I hope you enjoyed this little automation. It was a little bit of a different video, but uh, it was a really cool project, and I just wanted to share it with you guys because I know some of you out there are gonna take great interest from it. It's probably also something you could do on a uh, Neptune Apex or a um, any other sort of reef tank controller out there, but if you know me, I'm not a massive fan of the off-the-shelf automation systems out there. I do 
do like to have these little bespoke systems that run independently of each other and um, well, they're cheap and they work well. Anyway guys, I've promised I'll wrap it up a few times now, so this time I absolutely will. Till next time, stay safe and keep reefing. Cheers, bye.